guys, Mix here, and in today's video, we are working on the Corvette, and we're going to be doing uh, a couple things. One that's very important, and something else that I have been dying to do basically since I've gotten this thing. So, first off, I'll show you guys what we're going to be doing. If I just reach my hands out in here, this shouldn't be that easy to take off. Yeah, that's not right. So, the other day, I was just coming back from a drive in this thing, and it was dark out. The headlights on this thing are terrible and there was like a two foot snow bank along the driveway and it was kind of coming over here so i couldn't really see pulling in well when i was driving i smashed into the snow bank and this i was basically three-wheeling like a jeep in a parking lot and for whatever reason it caused the power steering belt to fall off so i was like maybe some type of flex or something that just made it fall off. So a couple days later, uh, I went ahead and threw it back on and it was good for a little bit and then it fell off again. It, I wasn't beating on it or really anything like that. It just fell off and oh, I, I knew it had fell off because when I was making a turn and I almost like crashed into a fence because I was not ready for it. That's how I knew. And uh, this power steering is definitely something uh, we take for granted. And this belt doesn't really look the best it's got some uh pretty decent wear on it so i think instead of trying again to put on this one i'm gonna go ahead and get a fresh unit for this thing and throw it in and hopefully uh when i hit that snowbank and didn't cause any type of damage somehow i mean i don't think i hit it that hard that it was causing like any type of serious damage or anything like that it is definitely kind of a pain to do the power steering belt but it's something that i really want to uh do so i could drive this thing because it is beautiful out today and the second thing that I am more excited to do than the power steering belt is try and freshen up the centerline wheels. So these wheels came with the car and obviously they are not in the greatest condition. I mean, they're not bad like scratched up wise, but they are definitely really faded because I was looking up pictures of these and well, they're supposed to look that shiny like the ones on the S10. So these ones definitely I think might be able to clean up I mean, since I've had them, they haven't been polished at all. So I'm not even sure when the last time these things could have been cleaned was. And obviously, you know, there are some markings that we aren't going to be able to like detail out of it. But if we could get a shine out of this thing, which I think we might be able to, because it does kind of have like a little bit of a glisten in it. It looks better on camera, but in, in person, it's pretty bad. I definitely think we'll be able to uh, give them another life. And I'm going to try and use uh, kind of like a little detail tip that you put on a drill and go with the groove because as you guys might be able to see these things are machined it's like a brushed aluminum pattern so as long as i follow with that and just keep at it at first i'm thinking i'm gonna hit it with some steel wool you know maybe after i kind of just wipe them down because i mean they are pretty dirty then i'll go ahead and after washing it using steel wool fine steel wool so i don't scratch it up and just kind of getting all that surface rust off of it and all like that surface corrosion from the weather then I could try and that detail compound with the drill and see how it works. On YouTube, online, it seemed like it worked really well, but we'll just have to see for ourselves. And that definitely should give this thing a, a little bit of a better look because obviously uh, the paint on this thing is still shot. And I'll give you guys a little update with that uh, when we're in the truck and we're on the way to the auto parts store to get the belt and the uh, detailing stuff for the wheels. I've been putting a lot of thought into the whole paint situation with the Corvette. And if you guys didn't know what was going on with that already, to paint that Corvette, it's gonna be like 10 to 15 grand. And I could buy literally a whole another Corvette just based on that price. So that's a little bit out of my price range. So obviously if you guys have been around with this channel for a while, you guys know that we like to, well, I like to do stuff on my own. I've been thinking about sanding down everything on the Corvette by hand, making my own little carport in it, in my driveway, sealed up, because I'm sure that's not gonna be something that I'm gonna get done in one day. Or maybe it is, I have no idea. I don't really know a lot about bodywork, especially fiberglass. I just know that if you mess it up and like crack it, then like you gotta take it to, pro to a professional. So obviously I don't wanna do that, but there's only one way to really learn than just to try it. So I've been thinking about it's a Blackhawk up there, that's kind of cool. I've been thinking about just uh, sanding it down, and if I'm feeling frisky, 
making it a full DIY paint job and learning how to paint. And by learning, I mean getting a Harbor Freight paint gun and watching a YouTube video. But then again, I also don't want it to look terrible and waste a ton of money. It's definitely something to put thought into. I mean, I would not try and like cut corners at all doing this paint job. I try and do everything like the right way. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I know a lot of you guys were saying take it to Mako. And I've heard mixed reviews with that also. Obviously it is a lot cheaper, but I've also heard that they can destroy a fiberglass car. So there is another place that I want to check out soon. Uh, just once I can get the Corvette there to get a uh, estimate on it because they do specialize in like Corvette paint jobs, which probably means it's gonna be a lot of money, but you never know. But definitely let me know uh, what you guys think down in the comments of what I should do. All right, detailing stuff has been acquired. Now I just gotta go to a uh, different parts store to get a belt and then just a hardware store to get the uh, steel wool, and then we'll be good to uh, get to work. New belt has been acquired. Steel wool and WD-40 has been acquired. Now let's head back. All right, so first I'm gonna start off with uh, replacing the power steering belt. Well, it's already off. I just gotta put the new one on, but it's fairly simple once you get the belt in there. There's not much clearance between, uh, you know, where the fan mounts up to on that pulley and the uh, crank pulley. So it's pretty tight in there, but if I was able to get it last time, then I'll be able to get it again. All it is is two uh, 14 millimeter bolts just holding the whole power steering unit in place. So you just loosen it, push it forward, get it on. And then what I'm gonna use is a uh, pry bar to pull back, keep tension on it while I tighten it down. Alrighty guys, so the new belt is on and what I'm gonna do real quick is just fire it up, just make sure everything is all good. And then we're gonna get to the exciting part and uh, try and transform these wheels. Right, so go ahead and give her a quick cold start. Right up. Well, I haven't seen the belt fly off yet, so that's a good sign. Just gotta get it a little bit warm. It's like a hot out and look under the hood without needing to hit the gas. But ever since we did that tune, it has been so much better. I still have to uh, sit here and just give it a little bit of gas just for a little bit, but not even like, even close to the amount of time that I used to have to do that. Boom, just like that. It's already idling. Oh yeah, it looks good down there. Definitely looks good. See that chop? Oh, jeez. That oil pressure though, insane. We'll cut it off for now. Every time I run it, uh, I do check the oil before letting it run for long. Just cause this is an old engine, does have oil leaks. That's something that takes two seconds and can save you, well, thousands of dollars if your engine never locks up. Well, I already wiped off the dipstick. So this is uh, how much it has and it looks actually perfect. So that's uh, pretty good. So now that we know that this is all good. Oh yeah, that still feels perfect. Now let's get to the point I've been waiting for and uh, start cleaning up these wheels. So like I said before, I'm just gonna spray some, probably like spray away on it. Just get it all cleaned up. The good thing with these wheels is you don't have to really worry about brake dust. Well, you know, obviously because they're not spoked or anything. And this car has four wheel disc brakes. So if they were spoked, then brake dust would definitely be uh, everywhere. But since they're not, I'm just going to use some spray away and like a paper towel and just clean them all up. And then we'll go ahead and try to revive these wheels. These, these things are probably original center lines, probably like 25, 30 years old. I know somewhere on here, you can usually find like a stamp and then figure out how old they are from there. Maybe once I clean them up, I might be able to see some type of date or, you know, factory stamping that might tell me how old these things are. So guys, with that being said, let's go ahead and try to clean these up. I'll try and get like a before and after picture uh, for each wheel. I mean, on camera, they look really good, but hopefully once we start getting the shine to come through, then you'll see actually how bad these wheels actually are. So I knew that these wheels were a little bit dirty, but they were definitely a lot dirtier than I thought they were. Mind you, I since I've had this thing, I've never washed it ever, just because what's the point? The paint's like destroyed, but I've always kind of just neglected the wheels. Just seeing how dirty they were, I'm curious to see how well that these things are gonna shine up. All right, so now that we're all clean, I'm gonna go ahead and take some fine uh, steel wool. This is what I've used before on the front of the S10's wheels, because those things like to corrode up a lot because I bought them used. Shouldn't really need this much, so you can kind of just, just break off some pieces so you don't use a ton on one sitting. 
And now I'm just gonna go with the natural like machining of this wheel and just go around the whole wheel with the whole groove. I don't wanna go that way because then I risk scratching it up. Even though it is fine, it still could scratch. So just wanna go nice and smooth around the wheel until we start getting oxidation out. And same goes for the inside of the wheel, not just like the outer lip. Still wanna continue, at least for this set of wheels, cause you can see they have that brush, like machine finish to it. So in order to just maintain that, you wanna make sure that you do this. And it is different for all different wheels, like the race stars on the S10, you can't see the brush finish on it at all. So just something to keep in mind. And as I go through, I kinda just wanna like break this part and knead it and get new pieces of the steel wool against the surface because the steel wool will get dirty over time. All right, so this is the uh, aluminum polish I'm using. Typically, I use a microfiber rag and do it by hand, but online it just seemed like that little like ball polishing piece did better. I'm just curious to see which one I think would do better, but you just supposedly, I'm just going along as I do this. And if it works, then, well, I'd be pretty happy, but I'm just gonna spread this around and then I'll put a little bit probably on the ball itself. And then I kind of do the same thing with the steel wool and just go around and let it do its thing. All right, so now that I just spread this around like some block, <laughs> let's try and give this thing a shot. And then once I'm done doing this, then I just take a microfiber and I just kind of like buff it off. Hopefully the microfiber will make it shine now. Ooh, not bad. Look at all that junk that is coming off of this thing. Wow, those are cleaning up nice. Now, when I first got this thing, for some reason, I thought that they weren't a shiny wheel like they were meant to look like that because all the ones online seemed to look like that, except for the new, new ones. Now it's true colors are revealing itself. And I'm sure if I do this all again and kind of like give it another uh, coat, I'm sure it looked even better, which is pretty amazing. This is just the first coat doing it. So guys, here is what it looks like up close. It's got like a mirror finish to it. You can actually see reflection in it now. This is what it used to look like kind of just plain definitely an improvement for maybe like 20 minutes of just going at it now walk back over wow that actually makes the car look so much different oh yeah you could definitely see the difference i'm not one that's really great at detailing and like cleaning stuff but i am pretty stoked on that then the reason i bought the wd-40 is just to give it a uh, coat when i'm done to help protect it from the environment because WD displaces water. And when water sits on chrome wheels, it gathers, you know, water spots and then it'll start like corroding. And since we just kind of scraped off that layer of just disgustingness and it's now, now it's down to fresh, wow, that's smooth. Now it's down to fresh, clean metal. I'm gonna go ahead and put on that extra layer of protection to help uh, prevent us from doing this again, like a month from now. So guys, with that being said, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just crank out the rest of the wheels and get this thing sitting on all four shiny new shoes. Just like that, this wheel is done and looking amazing along with the other three. So I'm just stoked. One thing that I have to get are these uh, center caps. I only have one on uh, all four of the wheels and it's this one. And it also cleaned up very well along with the wheel. 
but that'll definitely just help uh, get rid of that eyesore on the rest of the wheels. But I could not be happier on how this came out. I'm definitely gonna do it on uh, the S10's uh, front wheels. Now the rear ones are pretty good. I could also do it on them, but they're fairly new. Uh, but the fronts, I just did them a couple days ago using like, and by hand, just real quick. They are a little bit bland looking. So I might try out this whole combo and I think it'll work uh, definitely just as good, if not better than how it did on these wheels. But guys, the sun is going down and by the time I clean up huh, this whole mess, it's gonna be dark out. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start cleaning up all of this. And I'm gonna throw on a quick coat of WD-40 on all four of the wheels to protect them. This thing is good to go now. It's got power steering, nice clean shoes. Now we just have to figure out uh, this whole paint situation. But like I was saying before, comment down below on what you guys think I should do. If I should just send it and just <laughs> give it a shot after watching <laughs> some YouTube videos and stuff. Or if you guys think Mako is still a good option. Because I don't want a crazy like show car paint job. I want something presentable. So guys, we are actually back here the next day. And just overnight, I thought of something else that I need to do on this thing. So... When I first got the Corvette, there was always this little button right here. I didn't know what it was for until I finally pressed it and it was just a horn button. And it worked fine, but up until like a couple months ago, um, I guess my arm like hit it and it, well, it broke and does not work anymore. Or sometimes it gets like stuck on and I feel bad if whoever's in front of me because like the horn is just blaring behind them. And then I just start like hitting it and stuff to try and get it to, uh, go away so i definitely want to get this taken care of so what i think i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get a little bit european here but on like old porches and uh like mgbs and everything some of them have horn uh buttons mounted onto the dash and that is exactly what i'm going to do so basically what i want to do before i go ahead and go out and buy the button is take off this little side panel so i can expose the wiring underneath and I want to see how it is ran to see how far uh, it can go. I would like to have it like maybe like right here. That's easy to reach. I wouldn't really want to have it on my left side because usually I'm driving with my left hand and shifting with my right. And, you know, I could take off my hand off my shifter to hit the button if I have to. But ideally, I don't want to take my hands off the wheel. So I think this little opening right here, just right there in the center would be perfect. I don't have to reach far to get it. Let's just go ahead and pull back this little side panel, just literally one Phillips head screw. And a person zip tied it. I did not do that, it came like that. And then I'll try and run back the wiring for the horn. Okay. All right, so there is the mess. I did not miss seeing that, that's for sure. I think I found one of them. Right, so I finally got uh, the two wires all unraveled out of this whole wiring mess that's under here. And it leads straight back. It's these two green wires and it goes right back to where I'm gonna wanna put it. So it's perfect lengthwise. We don't have to really worry about anything at all. So that's good. I already went ahead and just cut off the, uh, the end of it just to make it easier to get it through because there is like a metal plate that holds this that I had to go through. This whole thing was junk anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So what I'm gonna do just real quick is go run to the store, pick up the button, come back, and then we'll get to installing it. I think it should look pretty cool. It should look nice and uh, slick on there. And I'm just excited to have a horn again. It's the little things in life that matter. So I just got back from AutoZone and I got the new switch. So basically what I have to do is drill a hole right into the dash, but make sure that the drill bit is small enough that it won't, you know, <laughs> make it too big, so. I want a little bit smaller than this uh, little inner diameter piece and I should just be able to uh, push it through. And then the two terminals on it, I just have to splice the horn wires and then I just lock them down with those two flathead screws that are on there. And it should look pretty cool and hopefully work. <laughs> so with that being said, let's go ahead and get this thing all installed. Alrighty guys, so I just finally finished up uh, putting the horn button in and it came out like flawless. It looks really, really nice, really sleek. I probably should have tested it <laughs> before I even drilled a hole through the dash, but it should work. I don't see why I wouldn't. And with my luck, it probably won't. All right, so I'm just gonna reconnect the battery and well, we'll see if we have a horn. All right, we got power. Okay, well, the horn isn't blaring, but we'll see. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's pretty awesome, actually. Woo! <laughs> Works pretty good. 
all the wires are all nice and tucked underneath, back underneath here. But for right now, I mean, that's pretty much it. Like I said, it is the next day and the wheels are still glimmering just as nice as they were uh, yesterday, so that's good. And I am going to order uh, center caps for all the wheels to help, you know, get rid of that rusty eyesore in the middle because obviously it does look way better with the center cap in there but anyway guys with that being said i'm going to be ending off the video here uh definitely comment down below of what i was saying earlier in the video of what you guys think i should do with the paint if i should try and like sand it down myself first and then send the paint or just try and do the whole thing and just learn as i go i definitely want to hear what you guys think so make sure to comment that down below but with that being said follow my social medias they will be on the outro of this video instagram and snapchat i use the most but thanks for watching please subscribe and comment tell your friends with the channel